It's no secret if diversity in Indonesia is filled with colors that make the nation's identity increasingly known to the world. With a population of around 260 million individuals in Indonesia, they live in areas with different geographical conditions, ranging from urban, rural, mountainous, coastal to wilderness. They mix in different beliefs, thoughts, traditions, and the interaction between living things. Indonesia is unity, synergy, and communication that creates harmony for the universe. In this episode, we will summarize this harmonization in the program. Local Wisdom Talk about harmony. Of course, you will catch the meaning of a similar movement, harmonious and attractive. The cultural product that is closest to us and still preserved to this day is dancing. One of the dances that has fast movements and often performs abroad is Sangma dance. This dance is a 14th century AD Gayu Highland tribal dance which is usually performed when celebrating important events related to traditions. In some literature, it is stated that the Saman dance was developed by Sheikh Saman, who is referred to a Gayo cleric in Saudi's Aceh. There is a version that this dance was originally a folk game called the Puk Abe, which was much in demand by the people of Aceh at the time. Then Sheikh Saman was inspired to develop this game by inserting various poems certaining praise to God so that the Salman dance eventually also became one of the dark web media at the time. However, other sources state that it is possible that this traditional dance originated from old Malay art, which has a characteristic applause and clapping of the chest. But previously, this dance was only performed by men, and there were no more than 10 performers. With the development of the time, Saman dance was finally carried out by many female dancers, who then brought religion values, educational values, courtesy values, heroic values, solidarity values, and the values of togetherness. The Saman dance movement is performed in a sitting neat, line manner which is different from other dances. Therefore, the Saman dance cannot be performed by just one person. The more dancers are involved and it looks crowded, the summon dance will be more beautiful and majestic. So, don't be surprised if the summon dance has been signed as a world intangible cultural heritage by UNESCO. From the westmost province in Indonesia, we turn to the eastern of the island of Java, Bali province. This island, which is known as the Island of Gods, does have a magnet to attract foreign tourists. The dance is often performed in several big events and involves many people in every performance, that is, Kata dance. The uniqueness of this dance lies in the rhythm and the dancer who formed a circle, the present performance from several Ramayana stories. Yeah, the Kuchak dance is a dance that is inspired by the Sanhyang ritual, and is a secret dance. This dance is even referred to us as means to community spiritual communication with God or ancestral spirit. This tradition is also referred to as a cultural heritage to resist bad spirits. They will dance to the accompaniment of worship songs and the accompaniment of beats in an unconscious condition. The history of Ketak dance originated from the idea of a Balinese dancer named Iwayan Limbak, together with the national painter Germany, Mr. Walter Spice, the two collaborated to take and modify some elements of the Sanghyang dance 
to create the Kata dance. Then, in the 1930s, Kata dance was introduced. This dance, also known as the Fire Dance, is often a highly anticipated attraction by tourists visiting Bali. This dancer will play sarongs or polang clothes and will solemnly so chak while raising their hands. As a dance form drama, kaca dance is generally performed in an open space at sunset. The cohesiveness of the dancers will create a dynamic, energetic, and enthusiastic rhythm so that the tempo of the performance will feel faster every time. With the sunset background, tourists can watch phenomenal kecak dance performance, among other at Tanalo, Garuda Wisnu Kencana Cultural Park, Pura Dalam Ubud, and the most famous Uluwatu Temple. Talk about harmony and traditional dances. Of course, we must not forget the easternmost part of Indonesia, Papua. Traditional dances from Papua that are free to be performed by anyone without age restrictions are the Sajojo dance. Initially, Sajojo dance was only performed to complete the ceremony customary among the Papuan people. But along with the times, Sajojo dance begin to be used to welcome distinguished guests when visiting Papua or perform at national cultural events and even introduced to various regions so that anyone can recognize it. The name Sajojo dance is taken from a song called Sajojo which tells about a village girl who is coveted and loved by her family and the man in her village. According to some source, this dance has been around since 1990. The Sajojo dancers are identical with white makeup on the eyes, cheeks, and noses. While the movement in Sajojo dance focuses on the pounding of the feet and the jumps made by the dancers. They will jump, move forward, backward, to the left or right with rhythmic rhythm and firmness of movement. This dance can also be created by yourself and flexible with variations in style as a form of support and national pride that must be preserved. Even so, Saijojo dance never leaves its uniqueness and authentic city. The dancer from wherever they come from will stick to their custom, movements and pleasing expression. All the three dancers that we discussed earlier have seen their performance at various cultural events. Alright, local heroes. After this, we will discuss some local wisdom titled Harmony, which is definitely a shame for you to miss. Of course, only on Local Wisdom! Alright, local heroes, in addition to dances, in every region also has traditional songs, which may be hard to find nowadays. Well, this folk song was created because there is such a thing as a traditional musical instrument. That's right. At this time, the introduction of traditional musical instrument has been encouraged for the Indonesian people from an early age. So in some school, there are compulsory lessons to recognize regional culture, one of these musical instruments. Well, local heroes, does anyone want to know some traditional musical instruments which are quite well known and have been staged alone? Please see our summary.
This musical instrument comes from Rote Island, East Nusa Tenggara, known as Sasando. Sasando looks like a harp or harp at the cleans, which is played by plucking with fingers and has no chord. However, the sound produced by Sasando is different and has a distinctive sound. To play sasando is certainly not easy and requires harmonization of feelings and techniques that produce melodious tones. Not everyone can play sasando because hand skills are needed. The main part of the sasando is a long tube made of special bamboo. The bottom and top of the bamboo have a place to attack and adjust the thickness of the string to be plucked. Meanwhile, in the middle of the bamboo, usually given a senda or support, where the string are stretched. In its development, sasando is divided into two types, namely traditional and electric. Usually, electric sasando is played on a big stage and modern performances. Nowadays, because sasando's voice is very varied, then sasando can also enter into various types of music not just traditional, but also pop and alternative to accompany dances, poetry, songs, or other entertainment events. Talking about traditional musical instruments, it feels incomplete if you don't mention Kamelan. Well, you could say Kamelan is one of the original traditional Indonesian ensemble music that has been popular since the Majapahit era. The instrument that was first created was the gong which was used to call the gods at the times. But finally, all those musical instruments were created to complement the sound of this gong. Such a gong, saron, bonang, pelot, and others, which finally become a single unit called kamala. This traditional musical instrument is still being preserved and has even been known to foreign country. Apart from Java, gamelan musical instruments are found in many areas in Indonesia, such as Bali, Madura, and Lombok. Javanese gamelan is usually used to accompany work performances and dance performances with a soft rhythm. Later in its development, Javanese gamelan can stand alone as a musical performance complete with singers or sinde. Gamelan has aesthetic values such as social, moral, and spiritual values. In addition, can also function as a means of education, dance accompaniment, building a religious atmosphere, means of dakwa, entertainment, as well as welcoming ceremonies. Gamelan has been exported to foreign country and many famous European composers start to develop it because it was inspired by the sound. This third traditional musical instrument is rarely known to the wider community because of its shape and how to play it. However, this instrument is actually the result of acculturation of Islamic culture in Riau named Gambus. Riau is one of the places that stopped by the merchants from the Arabian Peninsula. The influence of Islamic culture, which entered first, which made Gambus musical instrument in the end, many were intended to accompany the dance and means of dahwa to be more acceptable to the Malays. Gambus traditional musical instruments are oval in shape, with strings that are similar in shape to a guitar. In addition, the number of strings of Gambus musical instrument can also be different. Some have three strings or even twelve strings. 
Therefore, these instruments can be played in groups with other musical instruments. Currently, gambus musical instrument are also used in the Zappin Dance Orchestra. The rhythm of the music is still Middle Eastern style with religious theme lyrics. In addition, gambus musical instruments are also used to accompany music at various wedding ceremonies and national cultural events, which implies that Indonesia accept the result of cultural mixing. Local heroes, some cultural products indeed produced by mixing different cultures. Therefore, we must understand that differences sometimes make us one. By the way, I'm very proud of cultural acculturation because of its creation, sometimes it makes cultural products more diverse. We will also discuss other cultural products in a harmonious unity that you should watch. So don't go anywhere, stay in the program. Local Wisdom. Local heroes, as we know that Indonesia has a very beautiful nature with a variety of colors, nature is no exception. Yeah, Indonesian nature is identical to land and waters, which stretches from island to island. Talking about Indonesian nature, we have a natural tradition that cannot be released in every region. So let's just start discussing Indonesian regional natural tradition. You should know! The people of Kampung Kalaodi Tidore City, North Maluku have a ritual of giving thanks for the blessings of nature from the Almighty, especially after the harvest time. This tradition is called Pacha Goya, or Harvest Party which has a ritual of rest from various activities. Pacha Goya is indeed similar to a ceremony to protect nature. This tradition is believed to have mystical powers related to nature through community rituals led by customary stakeholders. In Tidore language, Paka means sweeping or cleaning, while Goya from the word Goy which means occasionally visit them. So Pacha Goya is defined as the implementation of traditional rituals in secret locations. Pacha Goya is done based on the intention of the local residents, usually done after the big harvest season, such as cloves or nutmeg. In general, Pacha Goya include activities cleaning of sacred location simultaneously by all children and grandchildren, providing a place to circle. This trip is led by the traditional leaders who speak the traditional language called Sowohi at the sacred place. The ritual performed here is the traditional praise reading by Sowohi in a quiet atmosphere Prayers that have been arranged neatly by the ancestors were offered to the creator. The community's traditional tradition, which is an expression of gratitude towards the creator, also exists in Yogyakarta, especially in the Gunung Kidul area. The traditional tradition, which has also gone through a long process for several days, is called Rasulan. The purpose of the Gunung Kidul community doing Rasulan is as a means of prayer so that the harvest in the following year can be better. All participants of the Carnival Cultural will usually wear unique costumes, 
like a group of young women carrying brooms, young men wearing uniforms and weapons, farmers carrying hack and hats, and a group of mothers carrying tray. The celebration of the Rasulan tradition is usually held with a lot of festivities and also people's entertainment, such as traditional art performances of Reok, Chatilan, Ketopra, Tuwayang Kulit. However, they will also adjust the condition, especially during a pandemic. Rasulan will still be held, but not as lively as usually, and carry out in a limited way. They usually hold the Rasulan tradition during the dry season or during the second harvest station. The Rasulan tradition is held once a year in almost every hamlet in Gunung Kidul Regency. They believe that if this tradition is not implemented, bad things will happen to them. So the Rasulan tradition is an obligation for the community to be saved from distress. In this tradition, all elements of society are mixed without any boundaries. They all mingle and participate in every activity such as mutual cooperation to foster a sense of love for the environment. From Gunung Kidul, we move to the Kalimantan area, which is famous for its wilderness, in Banjar Regency. There is a ritual that is still being preserved named Seserahan Hutan, which is held in the interior of the Kahum Valley by the people of Pa'au village. This village is a lineage of the Daya Kayutangi and some of the Banjar tribe. Therefore, the procession of forest gifts is a very strong of traditional Dayak rituals. The process takes place at the Pa'au village traditional hall, led by the village customary leader. This implementation is carried out as a form of gratitude for the benefits of the forest products, for residents and the hope that the ancestor will help preserve the forest. Since the last few years, the Seserahan Hutan our forest gift traditional ritual has been scheduled to become one of the tourism events through the development of a tourism forest by the South Kalimantan Provincial Forestry Service. However, due to the pandemic, the implementation of these traditional rituals does not invite many outsiders and is limited to the village community. Indonesia rich nature makes the people very grateful so that traditional tradition must be carried forever. I agree. And after all, we are born and raised by the inheritance of our ancestors. Well, hopefully our review this time can add insight and make you more aware of the legacy that must be preserved. Yeah, that's right, because cultural heritage is very valuable and cannot be measured in terms of material. Local heroes, this episode is finally over and we have to resign immediately. See you in the next episode, of course, on the program Local Wisdom. <laughs> <laughs>